Hi, Norman with iSaveTractors.com here. In this episode, we're going to continue the engine disassembly process for our Ford 120 tractor restoration series. We begin by removing the four bolts that hold the bearing plate to the crankcase. I'm just backing them out with an impact wrench. And then when they're off, I'm going to use a medium-sized plastic dead blow hammer to gently knock the bearing plate off of the crankshaft. Now that the bearing plate is off the engine, I flip the engine over so it's upside down on my engine stand. I turn the crankshaft so the connecting rod is nice and close. And then I use a socket to remove the two bolts that hold the connecting rod onto the crankshaft. Now the connecting rod cap is perfectly mated to the rest of the connecting rod. So before you take it apart here, you want to take a sharpie and mark uh, both the connecting rod and the cap so you know how it is aligned when you reinstall it later. To remove the piston, just gently tap on the connecting rod with something soft and the piston will come out. After that, you can remove the crankshaft by uh, pulling the crankshaft out of the bearing. This particular crankshaft was uh, stuck on the bearing a little bit, so I did have to use a hammer to get it out. Uh, but after a few uh, medium-sized taps, it came right out. Next is the camshaft. To get the camshaft out, you want to take a punch and you want to locate the camshaft pin on the PTO side of the engine. Uh, you want to tap it out and then as you tap it out with this punch the camshaft pin that runs through the camshaft will come out on the bearing plate side of the engine. Without the camshaft pin in place the camshaft should be able to just be uh, slightly tilted and rotated and it'll come right out of the engine block. This piece here is the governor stop pin. This is what holds the governor on the governor shaft in your engine. To remove the governor, you just remove this pin and this little rubber washer here, and then your governor will be able to slide right off the shaft. Apparently, I didn't get footage of taking the governor gear out of the engine, so let's just jump to the governor cross shaft. To remove the governor cross shaft, you just take out this uh, bolt here. Uh, there's a little metal bushing that goes with it. After you take those out, you should be able to tilt the cross shaft slightly and just pull it out from inside the engine block. Here I am removing uh, the points off the engine block. That's a pretty simple procedure. It's just held on to the engine block with two screws. Take them off with, a, I believe it's a Phillips head screwdriver, and then that whole points and points bracket will come right off. And then after you take that off, don't forget to remove the plunger that operates the points, which is that little uh, rod right there sticking out of the engine block right there. Got it. Now, to get the valves out of the engine, you need a valve compressor tool uh, like the one that I'm attaching to the block now. It's pretty much a C-clamp with a little fork on the end that will go underneath uh, your valve springs. So you install this in there, you tighten it up, and what it's going to do is it's going to compress the valve springs so you can reach in there and pull out the two keepers that hold the valve spring to the valve. The keepers are these two little half uh, circular shaped uh, cone looking things that fit into the groove at the end of your valve. There I am reaching my fingers, grabbing them there. And then you'll see them right there. You probably can't see it that well on the camera, but two little metal pieces. Be sure not to lose those. Now that the keepers are out, all you have to do is release the spring tension 
off of the valve springs. Then you can reach in, pull the valve directly out of the engine block, and then you can take the valve springs right out of there. There is a top and bottom retainer around the valve springs, so make sure you get those too. After you get uh, one valve spring out and keepers, just repeat the same exact process for the other valve spring set, and then we can move on to removing the oil seal off the PTO side of the engine. I'm using an oil seal puller to remove this oil seal. This one was actually a little bit more stuck than usual, so I had to use a hammer to help me get a little extra power to get it out. Now with the oil seal out of the way, I can use my hydraulic press to press the bearing out of the crankcase. If you don't have a hydraulic press, you can just put the block uh, on two 2x4 two blocks and use a hammer and knock it out that way. But a hydraulic press is a lot easier and it's a lot more effective. And the same goes for the bearing that is on the flywheel side of the engine. Here I am just using the same press to press that bearing out of the bearing plate. Now sometimes the bearing is actually stuck on the crankshaft. And if that's the case, you have to use a bearing puller or separator uh, around the crankshaft. And then you can also use either a gear puller type setup or use a hydraulic press like this. And there you have it. That's it for this episode. If you need high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage small engines like this Kohler K-Series engine in this video, or your old Briggs & Stratton, Tecumseh, Onan, and Wisconsin engines, please visit us at isavetractors.com. We are devoted to providing new aftermarket parts for your old, obsolete, and no longer available engines. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.